Welcome back. We are at East Bear Skin 64. We're going to go in. Why didn't I say, hey guys? Why does everybody do that? Hey guys! What's up, guys? Hey guys! It's like every YouTube channel is like, what's happening, guys? Or like Peter McKinnon. What's going on, guys? Guys, it's all good. Guys. Isn't that like, can't you cancel that nowadays? It's, it's like, it's not PC to say guys. Anyways, me and Yellow Dog, our uh, day use permit here. We're gonna go in East Bearskin, and uh, I think we're here. Go do 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 do. And this is like uh, Alder Lake here. This might be really shallow to uh, portage over, but we're gonna go up to Johnson Falls. So we gotta do Alder Lake and Canoe Lake, and we'll leave the boat there at the portage. And then we'll just hike the portage up to Johnson Falls. I got the camera, the tripod, and I got fishing gear. And uh, we might, on the way back, we'll just do fishing, and we might go visit Crystal Lake too. So, yeah, be a fun little paddle. And then later we're going to go see if we can find um, CC and Alice are hiking the entire Superior Hiking Trail from north to south. She's somewhere in the Grand Marais area, but, uh, yeah. Look at, they got all the information here for people. Tell you how to keep your food away from bears. Your cell phones don't work. They got some basic rules here. No camping. You can't have fires. Fires are banned right now, anyways, because uh, there's uh, very dry, very very dry, and I might have a hard time at a couple of the portages, but we'll see. It's a little breezy today, but. I think we'll be okay. We'll have a headwind going in. These lakes are pretty small here. Uh, headwind going in and then uh, tailwind going out. And it's quiet. There's nobody here. And I don't know how many permits they allow for this entry per day. But I'm the only one here. Well, it's probably only like 6.30 in the morning. But um, yeah. Very quiet. I wonder what it's going to look like when we get in the wilderness. And they got here fines here too. Five thousand dollars for infractions, ten thousand for an organization or imprisonment. You know, basic, basic stuff. I already found garbage. There was cans in the parking lot. Uh, permits. That's a big fine if you don't do a permit. Motorized, this lake is motorized until this point here, and then they you can't take the motors beyond this point. What do you think, yellow dog? Should go do a paddle? All right. Let's get in the boat. Traveling pretty light here. Fishing gear, camera gear paddles. Bought it. As soon as we get around the point here, we're going to hit the majority of the headwind and there's really no escaping it. These lakes up here are a little tougher because they face straight along the open parts. Street east and west, so wind off Lake Superior, major headwind, which is what is going on today. It's supposed to be south wind. Well, maybe that changed last night. I don't know. And then uh, west too, but we don't have big camps, which is good.
we've just entered the southeast fork of East Bearskin and gone coming out of the wind. It wasn't too bad. Just a steady headwind. Of, I'd say somewhere between five and ten miles per hour. Not too bad. No white caps yet. Later today, but it does have tailwind, which helps as long as uh, the waves aren't too big coming over the stern. There should be a, looking for a campsite on the left here, and then the portage should be uh, right after that campsite. So. last fall we were up here on the granite river last fall and that was really low the portages were tough because they were just pure pure mud for a good 40 50 yards coming in and out of each lake and of course you gotta load the canoe in the mud and you're up to your knees and dad fell in um, on his back backwards Yeah, it's just so hard to tell. This lake is really clear too. The, all these lakes up here, like clear water and pine, and they must all be uh, in the same system. And at one point, there was a mile of ice on top of all these lakes. In that last ice age, and it won't be long before. It will be under ice again, and it will replenish or pollute everything. But we'll be long dead. Maybe you two will still be around. <laughs> but I got myself a new birthday present. It was my birthday yesterday. It's uh, Bending Branches Angler Pro. I've never owned full carbon kayak paddle or canoe paddle for that matter but it's I believe it's only 25 ounces which is extremely light one pound nine ounces it's featherweight and it's taking me a little bit to get used to paddling I'm still not used to it I'm used to my bigger heavier wooden kayak paddle which was nice because it would dive down into the uh, headwind. The uh, blades would dive down. And uh, this one I had to actually push the blades down into the water and I'm getting quite a bit of water in the boat. Um, I'm getting on a wet. So far, so good. I like it. Super lightweight. There's a campsite. So portage can't be far. Which is good. It's good family. Starting young. The only issues I've seen with kids is well the teenagers they're very loud. And they party all night. But uh, the other 
wish I've seen with kids is when it's time to clean up camp, you know, the parents are lazy and they say, hey kids, they search around, they all run around, they want to get out of there because they're leaving. Of course the kids don't clean up the campsite. And then they want a fire, so they said, mom and dad say, I'm going to find some birch bark. And then go and they grab <laughs> First birch tree, which is usually in camp, and rip it right off the tree, destroy the tree. And they bring young boys, bring knives, and it's the only real time that they get to play with their new knives. And they carve up as many trees as they can find. Whoa, it's really shallow here. I'll try to get a little bit deeper. Portage. It's really shallow here, it's like maybe six feet deep. To the sea bottom even. Trying not to bang on any rocks with this shallow water. Low water conditions. here and try to navigate in without banging up the canoe. A lot of marks on that rock there. What do you think, yellow dog? This portage has been pretty easy so far. I keep forgetting that we have wolves up here, so I'm trying to keep the dog somewhat close. We have wolves at home too, but they know where our kennel is and they leave us alone. Hard to fend off a pack of wolves. They will kill your dog. You bring one wolf in and try to get your dog to chase it out and then lure it away from a human and then take action. Some nice big Norways in here. A couple big white pines. Won't be able to see them until the second trip. I kind of kicking myself now. I probably should have just brought a little one of my dry bag backpacks and could do a single portage because the rest of my equipment is not very heavy. I just want to get everything out of your hands as much as possible. But that's okay. I can do another. I do another portage. I'm not in any rush. And here we are already. Oh, to Alder Lake. Man, I can't believe how warm the water is. I I swear the water is feels warmer than uh, air temperature right now. It's like bath water. the wind again. It was nice to get out of the wind. It was really calm. Some rocks here. And I gotta go through the channel to the right there, but I might 
might have to porridge that too because the water is so low. I'm gonna find somewhere to set this canoe down. Without banging it up on these rocks. There's a frog. Sit down in the water. Okay, let's turn you around. Here. Oh. Okay. Nope. Let me get in. Thank you. Having fun? It's a good trip, huh? Okay, dog. Can you lay down, please? Yana. Lay down. There you go. Okay, lay down. Alright, so we are now on Alder Lake. Paddle this one for a little while. I'm gonna hug the North Shore, try to stay out of the wind, but this is like a little pond, and I don't know if I'm gonna have to water so low, I might have to get out over here and uh, ferry the canoe. Um, First, on the map, paper map, it shows that it's open and you can go through it, but Google Earth didn't, it didn't look too promising and there's no portage mark on there, so... Look, this is how it goes. Nice. Look around. It's very, very rocky up here. I don't want to bang up the boat because I don't have a patch kit with me. That's what I should have brought. Duct tape. Just in case. I'm thinking, and my pack. Was not thinking. Mental note. Yeah! Nice and steady bump down. A couple of rocks. I'm just gonna ferry here. Here, the dog jumped out. Too shallow. Way too shallow. It's kind of what we had to do on the Grand River last year, too. Nope. Nope. No dog. Oh, there's a little bass. Looks like there's 
great. Somebody has made an effort to move the rock out of here, that is for sure. This is not natural. Try to dam this up, that's for sure. Alright. Man, just putting the canoe paddle in the canoe is the loudest sound echoing across the lake. Amazing how quiet it is up here. Okay. All right, Jan. Come on, yellow dog. Come on. Yana. Yana, come on. Come on, hop. There you go. Basswood. Remember how hot that was, Yana? Got some of the biggest lakes on the Bounty Waters just this year. Pine Lake. Big and windy. And I just hung out at camp and fished our own camp. We didn't travel much. And, uh, basswood, of course, is just a monster. And that was fun. I don't want you to lay down, sweetie. There you go. Lay down. Lay down. Man, I love these lakes up by the Canadian border. The water is cleaner, clearer. And, uh, it seems like the mud lakes are more inland. It's good to be around lakes that have rivers. Mm -hmm. or at least I like that. It's going. I've never been here. So we got just going to hug the north shore on this side. And we got one more portage to a little And the canoe lake is where I will leave the canoe. And we will take the portage, walk the portage, hike the portage up to Johnson Falls. And that's just, that's halfway. Let's see what time it is when we get there. And if we have time, I would like to go down 
transporting into Crystal Lake. As I hear that lake is crystal clear with a big bald eagle. See it, it's on the map. I don't think anybody's there. There should be one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, six campsites on just on the north side of Alder Lake there. and a portage and that just goes back to uh, East Bearskin on that North Fork it's weird well it makes sense I suppose it could come from Northern Lakes and so then we got let's see just a 22 rod portage Campsites in a 22 hour switched. Oh, we just saw the light. Northwest wind. Tailwind. And the first two campsites were empty. But it looked like there was a group camp on the point. It's the middle of the lake. But man, I have... It's amazing how quiet it is. I don't... the quietest I've seen it up here in three years since we went to Parent Lake. We only saw like one group going in on Parent Lake in 2018. And then of course our neighbors, one of the guys, uh, our neighbors were party animals. Oh, there's the campsite that's taken. Um, Neighbors were party all over that campsite. Beautiful. Um, our neighbors were one of the ones that uh, that died or drowned. Yeah, no, they don't. They don't. Yeah. That was a bald eagle on top of that tree. Beautiful. Anyways. Yeah. Um, our neighbors. I think we came in on, I want to say, it would have been Thursday, I believe, Thursday, and then um, we had the lake to ourselves on Thursday, and then Friday, uh, we got some neighbors, they, they cruised by, well, I'll just tell you a story. A different part too, but Friday night they had a big boom box in their canoe and uh, they were just blasting it 
and they came really close to our site too and the campsites weren't too far away I and mean, we could hear them um it was pretty rude and they were young young men uh, and then that night man i wish i i almost got up i mean we were in bed by 10 30 11 maybe had a little fire made some s'more um, not too late but late late for me and uh, they were already partying and they had their radio blasting and they had a dog that kept barking and barking and barking and barking and I woke up a handful of times um, woke up a handful of times during the night and I could still hear them partying and I ended up getting up at about 4.30 and I think they were done. So at least till 3.30 in the morning they were partying. And uh, it's not what the Bounty Waters is for. You gotta be respectful to other campers and realize that, especially when you're in, towards the middle of the lake on an island that noise and your voice is going to travel across the lake uh, very easily and uh, um, anyways so that was Friday night and then Saturday uh, Saturday was the same thing. Party, 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 but then we were in bed earlier on Saturday. I can't remember if we had a fire. I know we had some fish. I caught a bigger northern that I flayed up. We ate it. Anyways, Saturday we went to bed like 10 ish. And then around 11 o'clock, you can hear somebody yelling somebody's name. They just kept yelling their name, yelling their name, yelling their name. We thought they were yelling at the dog. But then we heard the dog barking. And they kept yelling and yelling and yelling. And I think they were probably yelling till 1.30 in the morning. And uh, next morning it was quiet. And we had breakfast and packed up camp. I think we probably left camp around 9.30, 10 o'clock uh, on our way out on Hog Creek. And we cruised by their campsite because it was on the way out. And there was two of the young men out shore casting. and. We smiled and waved and said hello, but they just kind of stared at us. Didn't say anything. Thought, well, it's kind of weird. Um, and then, uh, then we were gone. So then, uh, I believe it was just the next day, there was an article in the newspaper. Guys, that it was uh, St. Louis County Rescue Squad and the uh, St. Louis County Sheriff's Department had gone in. We must have just missed them. I believe they went in on a canoe, maybe even float plane. I don't know. But uh, they said uh, said the guy drowned, and I don't think. don't think they found his body for a few more days so uh, and he had no life jacket on so what had happened is they were drinking and partying and two of them had decided I'll show you the link for the article but 
two of them had decided that it was a good idea to go out and paddle in the dark, drinking, with no life jackets on at all. I don't know if they had life, life jackets in the actual canoe or not, but they didn't have them on. And uh, one of the guys didn't make it, and it's just a tragic story because I believe he left you know, a young wife and uh, two or three young kids. It's just couldn't believe it, you know. Uh, when I was 19, I helped bring a guy that drowned off the bottom of Chubb Lake, and that was a shocking experience too. So we have two people that were drowned. I mean, there's nothing that we could have done, and they didn't even come over to ask for help, which was weird. I, you know, I'm trained lifeguard swim coach and I would have grabbed the headlamps and uh, of course I would have gone out and, and uh, tried to help as much as I could. Um, but you know when somebody drowns they, they sink so there's not much you can do until the bacteria grows in their intestine and then then creates gases and then they, they float back to the surface but even still it was just weird that you know a member of their camp was gone they didn't say anything to us they didn't even come over and ask for help they were just continued on partying and one person was yelling I can't even remember how many people were in the group. I think it was four or five. But, uh, terrible. Absolutely terrible. Well, I'm trying to find the portage here. It's a really short one into Canoe Lake. Um, it's like a log jam over here, but... Oh, there it is. To the left of the log jam. Spin you around. I don't know, the jury's still out, right? Really missing the, the weight of the the wooden paddle, the heavier paddle. But I know on a long day, which I do have, um, this lighter paddle is going to be easier on my body. But I feel like I'm losing power. I just I really haven't powered through anything yet. Um. So. Yeah, we'll see. I bet you at one time you could get right through. Oh. Sit. Sit. Good girl. Bet you at one time you could get right through. Looking like Yana, you sit. No. Portage number two. This is the last one I'm carrying the boat across. The canoe across.
Okay, here's Canoe Lake. I see one canoe on Canoe Lake. Nobody at that campsite over there. stuff so what I thought was the canoe was just uh, two deadheads sticking out there and it appears there's three campsites on the canoe lake here and all three of them are open there's just nobody out here I think I've seen since he's bear skin since I've left. There's only been three campsites that are taken out of uh, very, very little traffic. So uh, at the end of this bay here is the, the long portage to Pine Lake. Where Johnson Falls is. So I'm just gonna leave the canoe and most of the gear there. I'm gonna take my camera gear and some Gatorade and uh, tie up the canoe. So in case we do get some freak thunderstorm wind, I'll go away. What a cute little lake. I think the family would like this area. It's very, very beginner friendly. Uh, short little lakes, you have shelter. Uh, very short portages. And uh, quite the variety. family oh shit nope dog's gonna go crazy here oh my god there's a whole family you guys got to get out of here <laughs> Set a foot out. <laughs> they want their portage back. Look at them. <laughs> Poor McGansers. Yeah, I don't think you're going to get them, yeah. Well, we finally made it over to Pine Lake. That's a tough portage. I wouldn't do it unless you had to, and if you have to do it, um, I'd suggest uh, <laughs> doing it a single carry if possible. I'm hoping that uh, I gotta get down into this bay here, but it looks like there might be a trail um, that goes over to Johnson Falls, so. Yeah, but anyways, uh, I would say it's mostly uphill to Canoe Lake, and then a steep drop down into Canoe Lake with some stairs and rocks, um, twisty turny. That's that would be a tough portage. I'd say four and a half out of ten. If I'd rate that one. Here's a big old pine, beautiful lake, huge lake. Yana, yeah, remember this lake? You were here this spring. Yeah, look at this landing. It's perfect. 
All right, let's find a trail. Hey, we made it up. It's really pretty in here. Check that out, it's about a 20 foot face there. Figure out where I'm gonna set up the camera. In a few different spots. What do you think, Yana? That's really cool. I bet you this place is flowing hard in the spring. Nice. What do you think, yellow dog? Huh? You having fun? Yana's having a good time. Well, if it was a hot day, I'd definitely jump in and swim. A lot of cobwebs on the trail. And spiders. Breaking through cobwebs. It's a pretty little canyon. I bet you there's some trout in there too. Alright, let's set up the camp. And that was pretty cool. I got some Good shots of the falls. Let's see how close I can get for you. These rocks are really sharp and jagged. Nice little canyon in here. It's been carved out by the river. I don't know what river this is, I'll have to look it up. You think yellow dog? Check this out over here. Ooh, pretty. Oh, you could jump off of this into the pool. Get real good. Ooh, get wet. Get wet, get wet, get wet. How cool is that? Yeah, you could jump right off here. There's a rock right there, but it, you could jump right there into the pool. Where are you going, dog? Get in there for you, sweetie. Okay, we'll go back. Very slippery. Woo, slippery. Okay. All right, Yana, should we head back? That was really pretty. You can only get here unless you go in the bounty waters. Do -do -do. Do -do -do. Do -do -do. Tricky. I missed a high angle shot here, but whatever. We got some really good ones. There, I'll show you my shots right now. Remember, you can find them at uh, tonefossum.com or just uh, send me an email info at endurancekennels.com and I can get you some prints. I'm gonna pack up the bag and we're gonna start heading back across the portage and then uh, head back to East Bearskin. So we're on the portage from canoe to pine or pine to canoe. And ran into a group of three, uh, one adult child and his parents they were on their hike up to the falls a 
look like they were well prepared for the bugs. Pretty covered up. And then a uh, uh, young gal, one young gal, looked like she was doing solo with her and her dog. And uh, so, you know, I got to see a friend, but we just kind of passed by. But this portage, like I said before, is either you're going uphill or you're going downhill. There's no flat. And uh, the steepest part is on the canoe lake side, but there are some rock steps and uh, some roots so you don't fall. And we're not there yet. We're almost to the top of the hill. Getting there. Looked like there was an old canoe resting place back there at one time, but it's long gone. It's a little bit of a clearing. It's interesting that they took all those canoe rests out. Um, I remember I've been coming up here for 34 years. I remember some of the canoe rests on the portages. It's actually pretty nice that you could stop and prop your canoe up so you didn't have to <coughs> set it down on the ground and then pick it up again. You can just uh, put it on the rack, one end on the ground, the other end up, stand under it or uh, get a drink. Yeah, you gotta move, sweetie. Yana, move. But this trail, this portage here, reminds me a lot of the Superior hiking trail where you're along the North Shore and you're either going up or you're going down. There's no, there's no flat on the Superior hiking trail. It's pretty challenging. There's some nice little wooden bridges and what's not. So there's some blown down trees like this one here. It's a big tree that didn't make it. That is a, either a white pine or no way, probably a white. That's too bad. Beautiful trees. It's amazing to think that one day, not too long ago, loggers were in here on these steep cliffs and they log everything out of here. Just complete clear cut. And I'm sure the last time they logged was maybe in the 19, 1930s, maybe 40s back here. So it's reforested and obviously there's some trees that they left to reseed because I don't think they even planted back then. Where nowadays they'll come back or replant or there's forest regeneration, natural forest regeneration. Well, they'll plant with, uh, usually at my place they plant with a lot of Norways. In some spots they do Norways and white pine and um, some very few spots they'll do. Uh, eastern white cedar but cedars take forever to grow forever and ever and ever hundreds of years before they really mature and the beautiful trees they smell wonderful <coughs> I'll be getting close to the top here it's getting steeper. But I'm gonna check with you in a minute. Alright, we're back on the water. I don't think we're gonna have time to come by Crystal Lake. Um, hopefully, we got a tailwind going. 
going out now, but it feels like the wind's coming a little more from the south. It's hard to tell until we get out into the middle here. But I kind of want to get back to Grand Marais and grab some dinner and then see if I can get a hold of Cece and Alice and meet them on the trail very briefly just to say hi. She's doing. Uh, head back home. Yana, can you lay down, sweetie? Can you lay down? Yana, lay down. So we gotta go back to Alder um, Canoe Lake here. Ran into big family. Um, so, yeah, three groups. Where we're all going to Johnson Falls. That was that last man. It was a group of eight. Some young teenage kids that wanted to pet the dog. And parents wanted to say hi. And, uh, yeah. We're going back. Well, the sun finally came out. It's nice, a little touch. Last lake, coming up to the last lake here. On our way out, and we're out and back to Johnson Falls. This would be East Bearskin. It's really pretty portage. Lots of big Norways and whites. Their needles decorating the trail. Very short, very easy portage. All of these were easy today, except for the one up to Pine, but we didn't portage, we just carried a pack in there. I love these pines. I grew up near pines. In Carlton, there's a lot of them. My grandma had a lot of them in her yard when I was young, and eventually we cut them down. Uncle Bill did, and then, uh, <clears throat> but Jay Cook is out there. There's just tons of tall white pines. Very, very beautiful. Jay Cook is amazing. Just an amazing place. And so are the Bonnie Waters. Of these older pine forests. <laughs> Trying to clean the lens off. I was uh, thinking on this last portage here about how many years that I've been coming up here and I couldn't I couldn't put a number on it. And uh it's either 34 or 35, pretty dang close in there, because I know it was well before before Dad and Mary got married. And it was well before Gabe was born. Um but I can't put a pin on it, so I'm gonna have to ask Dad. Mary probably knows. She's got pictures from the first trip. But Dad, Dad and Uncle Bill have been coming up here for, well, since they were scouts. And, uh, God, Dad's probably been coming up here for 50 years. And a lot, a lot has changed. A lot has changed since, uh, and talk to you at the same time here. A lot has changed since uh, I've come up here. I remember a lot of the uh, 
campsites didn't have they didn't have latrines most of them had fire grates I believe that's how we knew but uh, a lot of them didn't have latrines and we had to bring a poop shovel and walk back into the woods and dig a hole and back in the good old days and now all you hear on the Facebook group is people whining and complaining about bugs and fish aren't very good and blah 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 and it's probably a lot of first timers in the boundary waters but you are in the woods and uh, it's where the bugs live there will be bugs I live off the grid in the woods so I'm used to it it's not a big deal you can bring bug dope I don't wear bug dope unless I have to and uh, yeah or you can just cover up you know wear long pants and baklava and a long sleeve shirt they make stuff that stays fairly cool not as cool as shorts and a t-shirt which I like to wear and the bugs really don't bother me that much um, not sure why they never really have uh, and also you know um, pay attention to when the bugs are out they come out the mosquitoes come out pretty heavily just before sunrise and then uh, they're gone most of the day and then uh, they come back uh, just after the sun sets so those are the times that uh, they're going to be the most intense and when you can take cover in your your tent or whatever but uh, as long as you don't have a light on at night you won't be attracting them too much so yeah looking forward to our my next trip which is sag we're going to go uh, along the canadian border on the western side uh hit otter track and try to get down into cherry lake we're going wednesday through sunday and uh Right now there's three of us, there might be a fourth. So either I'm paddling solo or I'm paddling with my friend Connie. She's never been to the Boundary Water, so she wanted to go. She's a Minnesota native, Twin Cities, never been to Boundary Water, she wants to go. So I said, well, we're going, you can come with. So she's in California right now. And when she gets back, she would have like a two day flip over. So she's trying to figure it out. If she doesn't make it, no big deal. So it's next year too. I don't think I'll be doing any more group trips this year. I might do maybe one more uh, little solo day paddle. But uh, other than that, I'm, I'll be pretty much done because we're having puppies. Uh, at the end of August and uh, puppies take a lot of time and attention and uh, I also love spending time with the puppies and then dog training starts oh well, you're always dog training but harness training usually starts mid-September and that's also when uh, grouse season starts in northern Minnesota I like to be at home because there's a lot of grouse hunters and they, uh, they're much worse than underwater's campers. They, uh, they shoot and destroy everything in sight, including my personal property. And it's kind of rude. Last year, last year I finally caught them in the act. And that's the thing I've learned with dealing with people who destroy your property is you got to catch them in the act because... There's really nothing that uh, law enforcement will do 
uh, for you other than you know recording it writing it down that something happened but you got to catch them and uh, I like catching them it's kind of fun because it's really embarrassing for them they have to pay restitution they have to go to court their names in the paper and they're more than likely never to do it again they'll tell all their friends not to do it so yeah here we are back at East Bearskin now the sun's come out get a whole different perspective Whew. all right let's get in the water on Alder Lake. Let's see if we can run that channel. Jana was taking a really good nap and uh, she was a little upset with me that uh, I had to wake her up and then <laughs> did a double portage. <laughs> when we went back to Canoe Lake, she stood there and looked at me. <laughs> What are you doing? Like, why are you going back? We just left. Silly. Well, there's two kayaks. Those guys. Figure out the wind. Definitely have a tailwind going on, which is nice. Get out of here quicker, but it's hotter. And the sun is starting to come out. Yana, why don't you lay down? Yana, lay down. Come on. Hey guys, Howdy. how's it going today? Good. How about you? Good. Maybe the sun will come out, huh? That'd be nice. <laughs> you camping over here or there? No, I'm just day tripping. I'm on my way out. Oh, okay. This last portage here reminded me of a guy. Saw on YouTube, um, he was just this guy was just all over the place, and he was Canadian. And of course, he was you know YouTubing on a trip. He was in the Boundary Waters, and I don't know how he got into the Boundary Waters unless he was some sort of American dual citizenship. But he had a heavy Canadian accent, so maybe he worked in the U.S. or was married to a US gal, but anyways, he was with one of his buddies and he had a black lab and beautiful brand new swift canoe, carbon fiber, full nine yards, and probably a $500 uh, double bladed paddle, nicer than the one I have, a Werner. And he, when you get to the portages, you would just throw like literally throw his paddle on the ground and I would just cringe and then he would take his canoe and just drag it right up on the rocks and he, it always seemed like he was in a rush 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 no finesse whatsoever just dogging it straight through like power straight through everything and then <laughs> he is getting in his canoe after the portage and just rushing everything and he got in the canoe and tipped right over. It's just hilarious. But we got some traffic here. Paddling on these smaller lakes is just, you know, 
so easy compared to basswood. But we did good today. I think we'll have close to um, 18 miles, which is be well, be over 18 miles, I think. Um, oh, we're right around 18. I'll have to take a look at the GPS when we get back. Um, I beat my record by a mile and a half. And I feel okay. I'm starting to get pretty hungry. Um, but it's a good indicator. I'd like to do the border route uh, sometime next year. I'm thinking maybe mid June would be good when the water is up. That starts at Crooked Lake and you end at the uh, Grand Portage National Monument. The last portage is four miles long, so there will be a lot of fine tuning. Um, a couple trips to uh, fine tune everything, and then uh, of course, some very some much needed spring trips, solo trips to get in shape. If you want to be able to do that, I think first time doing it, you know, shoot for three weeks, but carry all your food uh, with you for those three weeks. Some people do drops, but why not do it like the Voyageurs did it? carry all your stuff with you. I think it's around 200 miles and uh, one guy said he did it in 14 days and he was paddling uh, 20 miles a day. He said uh, it's 12 hours in the boat and uh, he was fishing too. He relied, carried a little bit lighter weight so that he relied on fish but he's got a lot more experience than I do. I think there's a whole website dedicated to just that route. I gotta find it and take, take a look and start doing some research. Yeah, it would be awesome to uh, run the Canadian border and then try to single portage uh, four miles. You know, probably take a break every three quarters of a mile or a mile and uh, rehydrate, re-energize and then back at it again plus a dog and uh, yeah, camera gear. That would be a lot, a lot of fun. Maybe mix a rest, a couple rest days in there, do some fishing. What I would like to do, if not next year, maybe the year after that. Just have to see the dice roll. Well, that's it for this trip. Uh, 17.57, so just under 18 miles. I started at uh, 6.30 this morning. It's 2.22. I'm hungry. I just started bonking towards the end, but I wasn't pumping in the the food because I'm looking forward to going to my sister's place in Grand Marais and having a big fat juicy cheeseburger and a beer and then we're gonna go and try to find uh, CC and Alice but I'm gonna do a uh, TikTok on that so uh, no YouTube so go check us out on TikTok too we got 181 thousand followers on TikTok uh, that's a cool little app we'll see how long that sticks around everything just seems to uh, flow through, but YouTube's been here for a long time, so we'll just keep doing this. Talk to you later. I think we were out, Yana. She's gassed. Long day, huh, Yana?